YouTube, what's up, man? This is actually a first for me. This is a gameplay mid weekend league. I'm still 11 and 0, and I want to show you guys one of the games that got me there. It is Friday. This game was played on Thursday night. Um, just another example of just game management. How can you guys get better at game management? But before I get into my team, definitely made some upgrades. That golden ticket, Brian Dawkins, came out. You know, I added him to the team. Also got Julio Jones back. And. Anthony Barr, the new golden ticket, the legend linebacker from Madden's past where he could actually jump and actually make plays. He was the best user pretty much in the history of Madden is Anthony Barr. Added him to the team. But before I go over my exact team and where my abilities are, man, I want you guys to hit that like button, sub. Also, follow all the social media, especially that Instagram. I'm going to try to get things rolling into Madden 21. I mean, things are bubbling right now, but Madden 21 will be a launching point. So I promise you, make sure you guys follow all those social medias. Those links are below, man. And the Twitch link is below as well. If you want to see me continue this undefeated weekend league streak, pretty much play live every single night. That Twitch link is below. But let's go ahead and get into my team. I appreciate the support you've given me. Like I said, that new Dawkins has come out. That's pretty much been uh, the number one addition on my team. I did get Julio Jones back. So instead of Torrey Holt, we have Julio Jones Randy Moss, Walter Payton, Michael Vick, Calvin Johnson. I mean, just three monsters at wide receiver. Um, I, As much as we talk about T.O. coming out, who does he play over? You know, is he going to play over Calvin? Calvin, you know, Calvin does not have abilities right now. So he is 99 speed and he's 6'5". So, I mean, T.O. is going to be 99 speed but 6'3". You know, does he play over Randy Moss? No. Does he play over Julio? Maybe. Maybe we could sell Julio. Uh, I don't know. But... Uh, I do like T.O., do like the fact that he's an eagle. So, for me, that I, I love. Can't wait to see T.O. come out, uh, see what that card is like. But offense, I feel like I'm pretty much set. Still have the Eagles old line. I, I don't really notice it too much. I, honestly, I couldn't tell you guys. I, I I will never be a believer in offensive line until the game makes me a believer. Now, I believe offensive line, chems work. I believe that. But it's just not worth it for me to put chems on my offensive line. That's all. But defense, um, we did... Get the Brian Dawkins. I am an Eagles theme team. Let's take a look at this card. Um, so he's up to 99 speed. Uh, 99 everything. 95 tackle. Pretty much everything across the board. Man coverage up to 95 on Brian Dawkins. Like that's like unreal, actually. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, I still did not activate him. Um, so he's only gonna play in 146 or big dime or 236 or pass coverage because I still have Calvin Johnson, I still have Taylor Mays. As much as I love Brian Dawkins, just the height, the 6'5 and 6'3 of these two cards is just gives them a little more girth in the field. And uh but we'll see. I might throw Brian Dawkins out there, but as you can see, I have I believe 10 golden tickets on defense. Um I have Craven LeBlanc and Reggie White. These guys really don't play for me. But they're Eagles chem, so they're kind of kind of gooned up. I do have Miles Garrett over Reggie White in the uh, ability department. I use Miles Garrett just honestly just because he's faster. You know, once you break them sacks, you got to be able to catch Michael Vick and RG3 and Lamar Jackson. Uh, we have Mike Evans. We play him in the slot. Jalen Ramsey and Patrick Peterson will be my corners the rest of the year, bar none. They are my favorite. Patrick Peterson is my favorite corner. I think he's the best in the game. As much as we love these golden tickets, you know, all these new golden tickets, man, I feel like you guys can get Patrick Peterson for 100 k Get that done. Put him out there. There's not a bigger playmaker in the secondary. Like I said, I did grab the Palomalo with middle linebacker. So now having Shazier and Palomalo is two 98 speed middle linebackers. Absolutely ridiculous, really. Palomalo is... An outlier essentially, whereas you know, Calvin Johnson, these safeties aren't that big an outlier. The corners, especially, aren't outliers. When I say outlier, it means they're that much better than whoever you can put at middle linebacker. You know, Shazier is an outlier because he has that 98 speed. But if you put Shazier with Troy P and then you I put Bullock and Barr at outside linebacker, because I like to run, if you guys. You know, if you guys follow my YouTube, I put a defense out on defending near close or near tight white, whatever it is, the near formations. Um, and I like putting my coverage linebackers at outside linebacker. So we'll try Barr and Bullock at outside linebacker. Then we have Clowney and LT. Those are my pass rushers when it's pass rushing time, along with Garrett, who's chemmed up. So that's my defense. Um, I, I, I love it. Uh, the biggest, the only thing I'm waiting for is Sean Taylor. Once Sean Taylor comes, he's going to go to this other safety position, and then I'll have 
Sean Taylor, Brian Dawkins, and I'll have Taylor Mays and Calvin Johnson to play sub linebacker for me. That is my dream secondary. Taylor Mays, Calvin Dawkins, and Sean Taylor. That is absolutely beautiful. You know, so that's my dream. But let's get into this gameplay because I mean, you guys can learn a lot from this game. It wasn't the prettiest. You guys know you play those demons that blitz seven and eight people out of three, four. Uh, and this was one of those guys. And so we're going to get into this gameplay and show you guys how I managed the game and how we came out of here with the W and kept that undefeated streak alive. Let's get into this gameplay, man. And, and this one, as we see Julio Jones with Human Joystick, this one I'm telling you guys right now is all about learning how to manage the clock, manage situations, and, and play smart. A lot of times I don't play smart. I play with Vic. I get hit. I fumbled everything. So uh, to keep this unbeaten streak alive, we got to just play play the time play the game situations that we see right here he goes for in route underneath right there and gets that possession catch so we get a fourth down early i want to show you guys this because he no huddles gets to the line uh, i got a guard inside zone one thing about a fourth and short early in the game is uh, it'd be huge it would be a huge uh, momentum switch if i stop him here but you don't want to be overly aggressive and uh give up a touchdown because the ball is still on his side of the field he's nowhere near scoring uh, so don't be over anxious to go ahead and try to get him off the field right here as he goes for a quick out route and Madden cheats him. Gotta love when Madden cheats the other guy. Does not get the animation right there. So we get the ball already in field goal range. Shazier is the Vic canceler. He's all over Vic pretty much at all times. And we see right there, boom, take a big hit from Harrison Smith. I believe this guy had a semi Vikings theme team because he had Harrison Smith running all over the place. Boom, I believe that's Miles Garrett that chased me down. Maybe John Randall chased me down. He had bar and, you know, golden ticket bar on a theme team is probably 97 speed. Um, and I'm taking my three early. You know, it's fourth and four. You could have went for that. But anytime you flip the possessions and you get a possession up on somebody, you have to make them pay. So I take my take my three early in the game. Miles Garrett, like I said, I told you guys, he's like a golden ticket. That's why I still have him right there. Third and 20, he goes for the bomb up top. Night Train, boom, slots it away. I got Night Train and strong safety in my pass coverage. I like to drop down Calvin Johnson and Taylor Mays. I like to drop them down to sub-linebacker for Lurker and be able to use those guys. So Night Train plays up top. Right there, I could have made a bigger play and got crazy, but I'm playing safe, man. This guy's in the 3-4. The funny thing about the 3-4, it's really not funny, but it's really bad against Blast as I hit a, a crossbody throw. That's why we love roaming Deadeye with Vic to Julio Jones. The thing about Blast is it kills this 3-4 blitz. It kills it. See all these people in the box? Blast is the best offense for this as I just cannot get away, or I do throw the ball away from that 97-speed Anthony Barr. This is an interesting play. Third and 11, I know it's a deep blue, and somehow the deep blue just covers a curl. That's one thing that makes these blitz everything defenses so good is that deep blues cover curls, flats, everything. Uh, just a tough play. I feel like I drew up the right plays right there. Next time I know I have to put a streak to run off a deep blue to run a curl. So just got to remember that, man. Those deep blues are powerful, but I feel great on defense. Mutt, I feel just really good on defense as he actually hits this flat route to Cook and does a good job user catching to get more yards on it. He's going to go for this fourth down. And fourth down, you got to drop your nuts on defense and send everybody. There's Shazier. There's that 98-speed middle linebacker coming through, making that sack right there. So that's a huge play as we scramble with Vic right here. Take it to the two-minute warning. He has not crossed uh, his own 35-yard line. You got to take that into as I try to hit that crossing route real late. Throw it out of the year, catching it or no one's catching it. Third and four, we go for this. He blitzes eight people at me, and I just cannot run away from Barr and Clowney. Have to kick another field goal here, but I'm going to be up 6 nothing. I'm going to get the ball back. I feel good. He has not crossed the 40-yard line. And I'll tell you, you have to take that into account. As he tries to mix a running right here, Shazier makes a play. The way you play, when you realize somebody doesn't got anything going, is Aaron Donald makes probably the play of the game right there, diving and tackling. Like I said, when you notice somebody isn't scoring, man, you don't have to take a lot of risks. Don't fumble. Don't, and right here, and this is what I did. I took a risk, and I left the streak open. Definitely a mistake with 30 seconds left in the half. When you blitz that many people, you kind of have a clock in your head that pressure is going to get home. And right there, my clock in my head and what actually happened on the field was wrong. I left my responsibility and gave up a touchdown. That's what I mean about donating. And listen, once again, we cannot run away from Clowney and Barr. They are on my ass. Uh, two seconds left in the half. I'm going to call a timeout. Always give yourself a shot. Like I said, blast, and we're going to get up out of there. Boom. Now, 
You guys watch. That's why they watch the highlights. I always make this play, right? No. Anthony Barr is on my ass. Harrison Smith falls me down. Huge mistake right there by me. I went to the right. And I should have went to the left to the wider side of the field. Just use the physics of just a wide field and make it a tougher tackle for me. Also, I relied on Calvin Johnson way too much there to make a block. And, and for, you know, it just he never really made the block that I wanted him to. Anthony Barr being 97 speed, hawking me from behind was definitely a, a factor in that. But good tackle by him mistake by me not going to the wide side so i've lost the chance on a free seven points but okoye is going to get it back but uh he cannot outrun xavier rhodes so th if you have xavier rhodes this is definitely a viking theme team so i know blast is going to get me yards against this defense I, and i want to run blast as we don't just like he didn't get the animation we don't get the animation on our route i know blast can get me yards at any time versus this defense you just can't run blast over and over now the one thing about this kid is that because of Blast, he's going to go to a little more 3-3-5 uh, three, three, or different defenses I can pass against potentially. Right there, we get the nice little animation with, in with uh, yeah, Ingram to go ahead and get closer to a first down. Third and one, we're going to run Blast for first down. Blast again to get into the end zone. And this is what the game is about. I am going to kick this extra point. Now, Madden will tell you to go for two here to try to make it a seven-point game. In my opinion, it is entirely too early to start risking not, not getting every point you can. I already kicked two field goals. I'm not going to risk, even though I have Blast, the best two-point conversion play in the game. Uh, I'm just going to keep adding on points, add on points, add on points, because if there's going to be two or you know three more possessions in this game, those points are really going to matter. And I'll show you guys how they end up mattering so much. Uh, as we see Miles Garrett with a huge sack again, boom, there's Julius Peppers to hop on the ball. Get that fumble. I'm telling you guys, Miles Garrett is a golden ticket. If you don't have him, find a way to get him in your lineup. I'm running right here, there's Walter Payton. Whoop, we're going to go inside. Excuse me, miss. Don't know how that wasn't a touchdown, but once again, we have Blast, the best short yards playing the game. We're going to go up here now. They're going to want me to go for two again. And I'll tell you guys, I won't go for two again. It's still the third quarter. Still a lot of game left. Just give me my seven points. Make it 20 to seven. That is a 13-point game. That's a, It's a lot of football left, but at the same time, uh, I just really feel good with the 13-point lead. I, it's not worth risking it uh, as he hits this corner route and Patrick Peterson. That's my fault. Uh, what that's one reason I like pressing those eye close or you know where they put the corner routes I like pressing them messes up the timing gives Miles Garrett a chance to get home I ran zone that time allowed him a free release and he was pretty much able to snap throw that corner out Bad stick by me with the click on and took a terrible angle allowed it to be a touchdown should easily be a catch But I have to do a better job of making sure that's not a touchdown Right there if I get a block that's touchdown but right here, I just want to go ahead and I just want to milk. I just want to get this game going. When you have the lead, that's the thing. When you have the lead in a football game, you want it to be as short as possible. You want to go home. You want to get on the bus and go home with the lead. If you're losing, as we get a third and two run blast, uh, and we're going to no huddle, get to the line, run blast again to get this first down. I want to slide in bounds because we want the clock running. You know, you don't want to go out of bounds. You want to stay in bounds. But if you if you're losing, you want to try to extend the game as long as possible. If you're winning. Uh, then you want the game to be over. Like I said, he's not in 3-4 anymore. I'm able to go ahead and pass. And not kicking, not going for two and kicking my extra points makes this field goal a two-possession game. If I had lost one of those, one of those two pointers, if I, you know, if I didn't get the last two pointer, I would be at 19 points, and a field goal would still keep it a one-possession game. This one of the reasons, and now I can play so safe and go ahead and, and just take my three, honestly. But right here, I could pass the ball, but I want to just want to take a sack. And just let that clock run, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons why I never kicked or never went for two. I always kicked my extra points because all these points add up and now a field goal extends it to a two possession game. I can play a lot safer on offense. I don't have to make a big play. I don't have to do too much because the field goal gives me a nine point game. Nine point game is, is pretty much insurmountable. But on Mutt, without the runoff, it, it's doable, especially with three timeouts. Uh, if you're on offense in this situation, you should kick as soon as possible to give yourself a chance to get the ball back. Um, you're going to need you're going to need an onside kick if you have to use a timeout. And he's wasting so much time motioning, hot routes, everything. One thing about Cam Newton, he has the longest animations uh, with the hot routes and with the audibles all day right here. He's eventually going to roll out. Nobody's open. Throw the ball away. We're down to 50 seconds left in the game. I'm up nine. That's a two 
uh, possession game. That's I, I feel so safe, and Anthony Barr gets thrown right at right there. That's my golden ticket, Anthony Barr. Uh, let me know if you guys think any linebacker in the game makes this play. Two in a row right at his face. He can't jump. I will tell you, if I feel like if I have Lurker as I sack him on the next play, and he's going to go ahead and kick the field goal. If I have Lurker there, I think Barr makes those plays. But I don't activate the linebackers. But that's golden ticket Barr getting his face thrown at. But now, he's up six. A field, I feel like he just left. It's not enough time. He has to go for an onside kick. Um, if there was a minute left, I would probably still kick this deep, honestly, because in Mutt, if you, you're not going to get an onside kick. And uh, if I recover the onside kick, I'm already in field goal range. The game's over. Boom. And there's Julio Jones recovering it, taking it all the way to the 30-yard line. Easy field goal position. I'm going to kneel this one out uh, because even if he calls his timeout, it's going to be 15 seconds left. I'm going to kick a field goal, go back up nine points. So just an example of how, you know, Taking your extra points, man. One of my rules is just I never, ever go for two unless I really need it. If I need to go up seven with a minute left, if I need two to tie the game with a minute left, uh, you got to think when I'm going for two, it's either the last drive of the game or the drive right before the last drive of the game. If you're going to have multiple possessions, going for two pretty much never really works out. Uh, obviously you could get it and if you have a great two point play for sure but for my philosophy in Madden is I don't go for two unless I desperately need it because just adding on points man throughout a whole game it's back and forth a lot and if you add on the right amount of points uh, it, you're always going to help you in the long run man you'll always look back at the end of the game and say man I wish I had that field goal in the first quarter I wish I had that extra point in the third quarter it's always add itself back up so, like I said, man, this game is over. Uh, the the streak is still live. We are still live. So, if you want to watch me play Weekend League, twitch.tv slash dub dot. That link is below. Make sure all you guys follow those social medias. All them links are below. I appreciate all the love you guys have been showing me. We are going to ratchet it up going into Madden 21.